and I thank Lord Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful hour I'm so glad that I found out that He would bring me out Through His saving power Thank God I am free, free from this world of sin I've been washed in the blood of Jesus I've been born again Hallelujah, I am saved, saved, saved By His wonderful grace I'm so glad that I found out He would bring me out Show me the way like a bird out of prison that's taken its flight like a blind man that God gave back his sight like a poor wretched beggar that's found fortune and fame I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name thank god i am free 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 from this world of sin i've been washed in the blood of jesus i've been born again glad that I found out that he would bring me out show me the way I'm so glad that I found out that he would bring me out show me the way Fall 
Good morning, or good evening, Sunday morning, throwed me off just singing two songs, pray for that young group, just went in the back, pray for our, our youth, our youth leaders, that's a, it's about a new little group right there for Dalton to not to get to teach to, pray that God will use him back there. Grace or Lily, today at school they had a thing in the gym that was called tearing down the walls of communication. They asked kids lots of questions about suicide and personal questions. You'd be amazed at kids that have had that happen in their homes and have thought about it. They ask kids if they had a good relationship with a mother. Some raised their hands, asked if they had a good relationship with their father. A few raised their hands. Some couldn't raise their hands for either. Lily said just one or two could raise their hands for both. Our young people needs a lot of prayer. Amen. Appreciate you coming out on Wednesday evenings. Uh, let me ask you a question right quick. We got a, little, a minute, don't we? Would it help anybody if we started at 7 o'clock? Raise your hands if that would help you if we started earlier at 7 o'clock. Would it, anybody could not make it if we started at 7? You couldn't? You could come late, couldn't you? You could come late anyway, Shannon. <laughs> what did you say, Rita? Well, if nothing else, let's pray, pray about splitting the difference and trying to get started by 7.15 maybe. Let's pray about it and that'll get the kids home. And I know several parents that can't come because of their kids trying to get into bed and get ready for school. So let's pray about that and we'll, we'll do that later. I just wondered how everybody thought about it. Give me a few minutes of your time tonight. I'm not going to try to get too deep into the Word, but I want to help you. I want God to help you. If you got your Bibles, turn to Ezekiel chapter number 8. Ezekiel chapter number 8. I really wish I could save this for Sunday. But I don't, I don't think the Holy Spirit of God is much on saving messages. Renee thought that's funny. <laughs> uh, let's not get tickled. Straight face. Everybody found their place? Say amen if you hadn't found your place. <laughs> 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 
chapter number 8, book of Ezekiel. How many of you have read the book of Ezekiel? Raise your hand if you've read it. There's some interesting stuff in the book of Ezekiel. The Lord showed him a lot of things. Let's go to verse number 6, chapter 8, verse 6. Lord, help us tonight in Jesus' name. Use us. Amen. Listen. He said, Furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far from my sanctuary. Listen. That I should go far off from my sanctuary. But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court. Listen. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. And he said unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. See why I wanted to save this for Sunday? Lord, help us. Let's go back to verse number 7. We'll look at this scripture. and We might go a little farther. I don't know what we'll do. Try to mind the Lord. Verse number 7 said, And he brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Now God has took Ezekiel in a vision. And he's told him to go into the temple, to go into the court of God, Randall, and find a door. And when he goes in, he looks, and there's a wall, and he sees the wall. And he goes up, and there's a hole in the wall. Just a hole in the wall, peephole. In the wall, and he's looking in, and trying to see what he can see, Danny, and he can't, he can't see. You ever tried to look in? Uh, we've got an old building at the house, and it's just an old shed, and we build a wall over the outside doors, out of, over one of the doors, and you can look through the cracks and see that there's a door there, but you can't tell nothing. Now, this, this place right here, it's been eat up with sin. It's been eat up uh, by idols. It's been eat up. Israel has been eat up from the day one. And it's all coming to a head. And th this wall has been put up a piece at a time. This wall wasn't in the original plan. Denise, it wasn't supposed to be there. It wasn't part of God's will that there be a wall there. But over time, man had built a wall over the door. Now, John, uh, chapter number 10, Jesus said, I am what? I am the door. How many of you know this scripture? I am the door. But over time... A sin at a time, a thought at a time, a day at a time. Uh, sin is stacked up and build a wall over this door to where it's hid completely from the sight of man. Now I want to tell you tonight that the church is almost in that shape tonight. That Jesus Christ is almost hid from most churches. Denise, one, uh, one move at a time, one compromise at a time, one sin at a time, uh, one dead service at a time, uh, one person at a time, uh, stacking up and stacking up and stacking up over time. And uh, one day you'll come in and the Lord's just not there anymore. You can't hear Him. You can't see Him. You can't find Him. Amen. He's nowhere to be found. And you've got a peephole that you're looking through trying to find Him. Same thing with you as a church member. Men, listen to me. I, I talked to a fellow this week and he said the world and, and, and the church are almost tied in numbers with pornography. 50% of the world of men look at pornography at least one time a week. But the sick thing about it is 50% of the church is doing the same thing. The divorce rate in the world is 50%. Randall, it's the same in the church. A piece at a time. And it just adds up. And it adds up. And it piles up. Listen to what the Word of God says. Are you alright tonight? This is tough. Man, I wish. If I preach it again Sunday, how many of you act like you didn't hear it tonight? It'll be better Sunday. Listen to what he said though. He goes in, this wall has been built. 
a compromise of the time. I've seen so many come in here and start in the choir loft and end up on the back row and then end up not coming and then come back one service and then miss two and then come back one and then miss four and then all of a sudden they're gone. What happens? They're putting boards up over the door. They're hiding Christ in their life. That can happen to us just the same. Preachers right now, I've said it over and over, they're, they're taking month-long sabbaticals, two-month-long sabbaticals, and they're leaving their churches, and they're having to stay away, and, and, and the world is just crazy. And some of them, I know three, that it's their fault. Renee, it's their fault. What happened? See these walls that are over the door? They didn't happen overnight. They started with a thought. Then they started with an image. Then they thought about a thought of an image. And then they, they started uh, maybe a conversation that they th shouldn't have started. And they do a lot of this stuff, listen to me tonight, in the name of the Lord. That's the sick thing about it. We do it in the name of God. We do it in the name of religion. And it is religion. But it's not God. Amen. In a piece of the time, and all of a sudden, one day they look, and the whole door of Jesus is hid. You can't see Him no more. You've got a wall up. But listen to what the Bible says. Then it's verse number 8. Then said He unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I digged in the wall, behold, a door. That's what I had no idea Lily was doing this today till she told me this morning, and I'd never read this scripture in my life that I know of. I've read through the book of Ezekiel, but it didn't, come, it didn't enter my mind or my spirit. And when I read this, I, I flipped out. Randall, because he said, we've got to tear down the walls of communication. We've got to tear down what we've put in front of the door. Whatever you put in front of Christ tonight, we've got to tear it down and get it out of the way. Ben, it would be just like you somehow taking a big piece of thread and a big needle and going into the temple again and trying to sew the veil from the top to the bottom, back shut and shut the communication line between God and man tonight with sin. And that's exactly what sin will do. It will put a wall between you and God that's as sure as I'm standing here. Miss Reba, it will divide you from God. Amen. And this wall sure did have the whole country put out of the presence of God. As a matter of fact, can I tell you this? And I'll read some more. And I don't know where we're going with this, but this is the same picture right here as Israel is today. As a matter of fact, when Jesus was on earth about this time of the week, the week that he got crucified, stay with me. The week that he got crucified, he saw a fig tree far off, and he was hungry. And it looked like it should have had fruit. Now listen to me. And Jesus ran to that fig tree, and when he got there, it was bare, did not have any fruit, and it should have. I'm afraid that's a lot of church members, that's a lot of people, that's a lot of pulpits, that's a lot of deacon committees, that's a lot of choirs, that's a lot of sound rooms, that's a lot of Sunday school teachers, that's a lot of Christians that are sitting on the pews. When God came to us, I'm afraid a lot of times He would find zero amount of fruit on the tree. And the Bible said that He cursed that tree, Randall, and He went away. That was this week, about 2,023 years ago. That, that, this happened. This is resurrection, crucifixion, resurrection week. How many of you know that? You ought to be meditating on that all week. The next morning he come by, his disciples were amazed because that tree dug, it died from the roots up. Did you know that happened to Israel? To the point that they even lost their, their right to be a country for a long time. They became a desolate place that the presence of God wasn't even there. Honey, that can happen to us. We're in a country right now that the government can do whatever they want to. They can put you in a witch hunt just like they can anybody else. They can put the church uh, right, un right in the crosshairs just like they do anybody else. And don't think we're exempt. We better have the presence of God. We better be tearing down whatever's got the door, whatever's got Jesus blocked from protecting us. We better get it out of the way tonight. We better, amen, be going and not looking through a peephole. 
We better have the door exposed. We better tear it down. He said, dig at that door, Ezekiel. Dig at it. Go work at it. Tear it down. Lord, that's what the church needs to do tonight. We need to be digging at the wall. Amen. That wall that, that's come in our young people's lives, come in our young people's homes. Let me, let me preach to you just a minute. I asked you last week if you remember this, and I want to see if we're like that tree, if we're greener, if we got fruit, if we're real with ourselves. How many of you told a lie? Raise your hand. Who, who remembers me doing this? How many of you told a lie? How many of you stole something? How many of you lusted over a woman or a man in your life? But now, here's the problem. When I ask this question, and I say, how many of you lied? A lot of you thought about a lie a long time ago, Randall. And if I said, who's lusted after a woman? A lot of you thought about, well, I might have when I was younger. Or if I said, who stole something? Some of you went all the way back in your mind and remembered stealing something when you was a little kid. Who done that? When I said, who stole something? Who remembered something when they was real little? Okay, now let's go ahead and get over ourselves right here. Let's go ahead and drop our self-righteousness and think that we hadn't done that since we've been saved, since we've been adults. We want to get right with God and tear the wall away from our door. If we want to have Christ exposed in our lives, see, people can't see God in us. He can be in us. We can be saved and we can know we're saved, but God, they can't see God in us. they got to see God on us. They can see God if He's on you. There's a difference, amen, than having God in you and having God on you. Jesus has to be exposed. The door's got to be exposed, amen. The wall's got to be tore away. If you think about when you were a sinner and you think about back ten years ago to think of a sin, you're self-righteous and fooling yourself. Some of you think, I ain't, never, I ain't stole nothing in a long time, preacher. I bet you if you think hard enough, I bet you if you're real with yourself, even as simple as with your taxes, simple little stuff, Randall, that we, we can skirt around because I don't blame them, man. I don't want to give them no more money than I have to either. The Bible says if you look upon a woman and lust after it's the same as committing adultery. Hello. <laughs> Good morning again. Yeah. There's a putting the wall up, Doug. You know what? But it, it's going to happen. It's going to happen, Doug. It's going to happen. As long as you got red blood running through your veins, you're going to sin. You're going to mess up. And if nothing else, you're going to think terrible thoughts. There's another, there's covering up the door again. But listen, that's going to happen. The thing is, don't let it build up. Don't, don't let it build a wall. Don't let it cover the whole door. When it starts to happen, get rid of it immediately. That's what we got to do. We can't look at our sin and, and, and think that we left it all behind when we got saved. We got saved from sin. We got an advocate. We, with the veil's rent, we've got somebody we can talk to. But we got to be honest with ourselves as Christians and admit we're weak people. You know, there's doctrine going around now that they want you to, Ben, they want you to say you're a little God. You're a son of God, so you're a little God with a little G. Anybody ever heard that? That's a doctrine. You, you've heard it? All right, it's wrong. You're not a God. You're not a God with a little G. You're a child of God, but you're a man. You're a woman. You're a human. You're a sinner. Saved by grace. It was the grace of, it was the blood of Calvary. It was the cross. It was the forgiveness that He gave us there. That's what saved us. That is the door. But the door's hid. The door's hid from our young people. 175 kids that dug don't have a relationship with their mom and dad. They think about suicide. They want to quit and give up on their life. Why would they do that, Randall? Because the door's hid from them. I 
told you, God, they can't see God in you. Brother, you can be saved the rest of your life till you die and you can go to heaven. And you can have God in you and that's a great thing. But if you never have God on you, you're never going to do nothing for Him. And that's what the door being hid does. Amen. Are we all right? Man, that Sunday crowd needs this so bad, don't they? You agree with me? I, I agree with me anyway. I know them. Amen. Let's, let's read just a little bit more and we'll go home in just a minute. I want you to listen. I, want, I think I've preached about everything that i got to preach, but let's look at just a little more of this, what he told Ezekiel to do. And he said unto me, unto Ezekiel, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house, of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. Did you know it's a sin to have idols hanging all over your house? False idols. Things that you worship that's not God. Anybody got that? Well, let me tell you, I left the ball field a minute ago. You talk about little gods? I just left the ball field and come here. There's a lot more people there than they are here tonight, I can tell you that. You can't find a place to park, stand, or sit. And I hated to leave. If you're not careful, that little God right there, that's a, that is, that'll block your door. That'll put a wall up and you won't be able to see it. Anything that becomes more important than God becomes a God. A God with a little G. Amen. And there stood before them seventy men of ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Zanani and the son of Saphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Now listen. And he said unto me, Son of man, thou hast seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark. The religious men, what, what's done in the dark? What's done in the dark? Just in this room right here tonight. What's done when nobody else is looking? This is the backbone of the church. I don't want to skin this part of the church. I don't want to be hard on this part of the church. But if this part of the church, if the devil can get... Little foxes spoil the vine. Strong people mess up. Good people mess up. People you'd never think would ever mess up. They mess up. They fall into sin. One piece at a time starts to block the door. And then it's blocked and hid. Lord help us, and it happens in the dark. Every man in the chambers of his imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us, us not. What a bold statement. Can you imagine that? The Lord seeth us not. The Lord has forsaken the earth. Can I tell you that he sees everything? Danny, he sees every thought. You know what? When he saw, when he was with somebody in the Bible and they had a bad thought, sometimes he'd look straight at them and call them out being on their thought. How would you feel about that? Well, he does the same thing today. He knows every thought that's in some of you that's sitting there right now thinking, I wish he'd shut up so I could go home. I'm hungry. I'm tired. He knows every thought in your head. Some of you thinking right now, oh God, it's me. It's me. I'm the one. I'm the one that, he had, that God sent this message for tonight. I'm the one that has the, the addiction. I'm the one that's addicted to the pornography. I'm the one that's having the affair. I'm the one. It's me. I'm the one that's had the bad thoughts. It's me. Lord, help us, right? Listen, we'll be done right now, I promise. We'll go home. The Lord has forsaken the earth. And he said unto me, Turn ye, thee yet again. It just keeps getting worse and worse. And thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. 
Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. And I read about this guy. He's just, a, he's just something that they made, Doug, just an idol. Something to worship. The world's looking for something to worship, whether it's a new flag, whether it's a new religion, whether it's a new gender. They're looking for something to worship and praise theirself over. It's all one thing. It's all one thing. It's all sin. It's all rebellion. It's just rebellion. Everything that blocks that door is rebellion. Lord, help us tonight. Then said unto me, Thou hast seen this, O son of man. Turn, ye, turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, in the middle of the Lord's house. And behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord's, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty, were about five and twenty men, their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they worshipped the sun toward the east. Went to the altar. The churches on the way here, they were about all empty tonight. There's about ten cars in most of the parking lots. Guarantee you 90% of them went in dreading it, Randall, wishing they didn't have to be there, but they went because of obligation, because it's the right thing to do. Hello? Anybody else ever been there? Good. That's conviction. That will keep you on the right track. When you ain't feeling it, keep going. That will keep the door exposed. When it don't feel good, when it's not excited, when you don't feel like jumping up and saying amen, when your heart ain't stirred, amen, go anyway. Good for you. You're the crowd I want to serve with. That crowd that when they ain't feeling it, they're going to go anyway. We can do something with that. That's called faithfulness. He didn't say, enter into the joys of the Lord, my good and excited servant. He said, my good and faithful servant. You ain't always going to feel it, I promise. But these men were in the temple doing, and they had their backs turned to the altar, and they were worshiping the sun. You know what happens, and I'm done. We get so distracted. We get so pulled away. We get so caught up in our social media. We get so caught up in what else we could be doing. We get caught up in what's going on around us that we totally forget about the Lord. Now the Sunday morning crowd, they're going to get a good, exciting message about Jesus. But if you'll listen to this message right here, and you'll keep your door open, and you'll keep that sin away from it, and you, you won't have to come in here and tearing it down and fighting and battling, I guarantee you'll have a better time than they will. Amen? I worry about the church. I'm done. I worry about the church of today. I, I worry about it all the time. Preachers are falling out. Preachers are quitting. Preachers are compromising. There's a lot of hirelings. There's a lot of apostates. There's a lot of people that feel like they just have to do it. There's a lot of men and women that don't even want to be a part of it. But they can't afford to quit. I talk to them. I say, we're serving a living God. We're serving the God that made all of this. We're serving the God that's going to take us home one of these days, Randall. We're serving of God that this breath that I just took and the next one I take, He's the one that gave it to me. And He asked so little of me. So little. So little. Just a little bit. Just faithfulness. Just faithfulness. Keep working. Keep trying. Keep your door open. 
Don't let nothing hide it. That door is Jesus, right? You do. Did I say that tonight? Have I said that? That door is Jesus. If I don't preach that again this Sunday, you'll forget it by the next Sunday and I can preach it again. God help us. God help us to not get so bored with Jesus that we have to find something else. God help us to, James, not give up on him and have to reach out for something because there's plenty more that will keep your attention. You can get addicted to a lot of different things. Amen. Church, I love you. I did the best I could with what God gave me. And if you'll listen, it'll help you. Stand to your feet. I'm done. Do your business with God. Do your business with God. Let's pray together. Lord, we love you. Thank you tonight for your spirit. Thank you, Lord, for your word. You said it never come back void. I'm standing on that. Lord, I pray. God, you'd help us to be spiritual enough with your Holy Spirit. God, to keep the things of, of this world away from our door and away from our homes, our lives, and our families, and our children. God, I pray you would help us to be wise, and Lord, about who we're around and what we say and what we do, what we look at. Lord, I pray your spirit would convict us. God, help our church, help our young people, help our young families here. God, that struggle. Lord, we need revival. We need conviction. We need conviction so bad in our church. Seems like people can come and leave just like they was when they got here. God, we need conviction so bad in Jesus' name. Lord, we love you. Thank you for the cross. Help us to focus on it the rest of the week. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Fellowship, love on one another.